Hey everybody and welcome to Ascending with Jess. Today's video is going to be my top five recommended books for spiritual progress, spiritual ascension, but also I, I think these are like my go-to books um, for knowledge and also were my first set of books that I think really pushed my thinking and really made me start thinking outside of the box in terms of you know our purpose here in this earth um, the nature of our soul and all that goodness now uh, let me build a little bit of a foundation so 10 years ago when I started my spiritual journey it all started by reading and getting really into near-death experiences now when I was younger I was fascinated by this topic I knew a couple of people who had actually experienced that themselves who had been um, hospitalized and had an experience where they felt like they were outside of their body and I was like whoa what that sounds incredible so I started looking for books on it and over the years and I cannot for the life of me tell you any of the names of the books I read because it was so long ago and I actually don't have any of those books in my collection right now but I remember I started reading them and I was fascinated by the stories and the similarities I read different um, stories by different authors and people had similar experiences so that kind of built my foundation of this interest about okay what happens when we die what happens when we get to the other side what is the soul like all of that stuff so that was my initial foundation and then down the line I got into these books so these are my top five recommendations to get you going on your own spiritual journey. So the first one is The Law of One, The Raw Material. Now this book and series was actually introduced to me by my sister Jacqueline, who's also really into spiritual, spiritual spirituality. And she actually found this book and the series of them, there's five books in total on the internet for free as a downloadable, readable PDFs. Now, if you're not familiar with The Law of One, The Raw Material, it's basically two people, three people, excuse me, who got together as sort of a research project. It was Don Elkins and Carla Ruckert. Those are the main people that I know. And basically Don Elkins had a background in science and physics. And he was really interested in making contact with extraterrestrials, but he was also interested in the idea of what would happen if somebody got into a trance state and they were able to get into some sort of communication with something on the other side or in another dimension. And so he ended up working with Carla Rucker, who is in this book, The Channel. And together, along with McCarty, but I forget McCarty's role, I'm not gonna lie. He might have been the, the scribe or something. I don't know. But um, I don't remember, I should say. <laughs> but anyway, the premise of this book is that Don Elkins, who has this scientific background and wants these answers, starts working with, I believe he, she was a student of his, um, Carla Rucker. And he realizes that Carla, when she gets into a trance during meditation, she was able to connect with something. And so the whole book is written in a series of question and answer format where Don, the scientist, is asking Carla in her trance state questions about the nature of humanity and she was able to connect or channel with an energy who identified themselves as raw now don himself states that raw is considered an extra extraterrestrial being but the way raw identifies themselves is like an energy complex like a consciousness and so this book it might sound kind of crazy but if you're on my channel chances are you're into this stuff or want to get into this stuff um it's fascinating this book is fascinating and it really really was the first book that pushed my thinking on the way we think about the nature of reality and the way we think about the soul and the way we think about earth and dimensions and it really made me think about the densities and different dimensions and what it really means to be a human and what our purpose is so raw as the energy that comes through gives us a whole bunch of nuggets of information and what I'll say about this book as I mentioned it's one in five I read four out of the five books and I went basically from start to finish I, I never read the last one but once I started I couldn't put it down I was fascinated and um, the only thing that I'll say that is a challenge with this book 
is it is very dense in science language. Um, and even the way Raw communicates is kind of very um, technical sounding. Now, in case you don't know, I have a, a background in science. I studied engineering and physics when I was in high school and in college. And so for me, this was like right up my alley. Like my first love was science and physics and that's how I first understood the world. So mixing that with kind of this metaphysical lens, it was really easy for me to bridge those parts of my mind. But I would say for other people that I've recommended it to or for other people trying to understand it, it can be a little dense if you don't have that background, but definitely readable. So this is the first book I would highly recommend, The Law of One, The Raw Material, and read all five if you can. But if you can't, start with the first one. Okay. Now, the next two books in my series are books that work with another channeled entity named Seth. Now, the first book in this series, at least I believe is the first book in this series, is The Seth Material. Now, similarly to the raw material, this book also deals with two people working together to go into a channeled state to get downloads. And so with in this case, we have Jane Roberts working with her husband, whose name was Robert Butts. And they realized that Jane, when she would get into a meditative state, she would start getting information. And so they started documenting this process. And actually, they ended up referring to the law of one and the work done by Don Elkins and Carla Rucker in initially when they start making these realizations because they started realizing that had been done before. So anyway, Jane ends up channeling an entity who identifies himself as Seth. And Seth talks about himself as being this um, other dimensional reality who shares um, history, or I should say like dimensional history, with Jane. And then that's how they're able to communicate with each other. And so similar to the other book I mentioned, The Law of One, it's also written in a question-answer format, or at least parts of it, I believe, are um, if it's not this one, then it's Seth Speaks. But the first book in the series, this one, kind of details how they got started. What was the process behind this idea of trans-channeling and some of the messages, the main important messages that Seth had to give to humanity and humans about the nature of reality and also gave to Jane to kind of break some of her belief systems, if you will. Because in both of these books, it pushes your thinking um, beyond what you're taught. And it's a lot to wrap your mind around, but it's really, really beneficial for spiritual growth. So this is the first one in the series. Now, Seth, or I should say Jane Roberts slash Seth, um, they published a handful of books. I can't even tell you how many, but I have three in my collection. And out of the three that I have, this one right here, Seth Speaks, is my number one go-to book for understanding the world, understanding the nature of the soul, understanding the nature of existence. Now, Seth Speaks, it's a lot bigger. And the reason why I like this book so much is because in this book, Jane Roberts got communicated to by Seth. Seth basically was like, I want to dictate a book and I want you to allow me to do that. So I'm going to give you all the content. You just write it. And so this book is awesome because it is all written by Seth. I mean, well, there's definitely sections where Robert, her husband, and Jane clarify some of that information. And usually where they're talking is in italics. But the main book itself is like Seth speaking. And the thing that I love so much is the first chapter of this book. The first chapter of this book is when Seth introduces himself. And I believe the chapter is called, I do not have a physical body, yet I am writing this book. And I love it because he starts by asking the, the person who's reading the book to just give him some respect and credibility and basically goes on to say, yes, I don't have a body and yes, I know that that might be difficult for you to comprehend, but I have experienced and shed way more bodies than I would like to disclose and trust me when I tell you my soul knows way more than you and just like listen to me and give me a platform. And I mean, I feel like I didn't do it justice, but if you read the first chapter, let's say you go to Barnes and Noble 
and you decide you want to go look in the spiritual section and you see this book, you don't even have to buy it. Just take it off the shelf in Barnes & Noble or wherever, whatever bookstore you have. Just open it. You don't have to buy it, but just read the first few pages of the first chapter and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But this book is full of amazing topics and to give you like um, an idea of kind of the things that are covered in here by Seth and Jane, um, it's split into two parts. And I'm just going to name off some chapters. Um, not all of them, but some. So, my present environment, work, and activities. That's what Seth is speaking on. My work and those dimensions of reality into which it takes me. Reincarnational dramas. How thoughts form matter and coordination points. The soul and the nature of its perceptions. The death experience. Sleep, dreams, consciousness. Studies of the beginning and the multidimensional God. Probabilities, the nature of good and evil and religious symbolism. Now that is just one of 22 chapters. I mean, not one, that's just a few out of the 22 chapters, but <sighs> in this book, I'm telling you, this is like my Bible. And I don't mean that in any disrespectful way because I was raised Christian, so no disrespect G-O-D or the Bible, but it's just rich, very rich. And whenever I want clarity on something, I go to Seth and say like, okay, how does Seth see this? Or how does Seth explain that? And I love it. I feel like it's given me a, a huge perspective on the reality of nature. And also I, I dealt with a lot of loss in my life and I lost a lot of people. And I feel like the chapter on death really helped me heal during those times. So that would be number three in my recommendations. Okay. The next book that I would recommend to somebody who's interested in diving deep, especially if you're interested in doing the work yourself, like if you're interested in these topics of channeling or connecting to your higher self, then I really recommend those books, but I also recommend this book. And this is How to Access the Akashic Records by Linda Howe. Now, this book, I was hesitant to include it in my top five because I don't want to say that it's like anything exceptional. Like I really loved reading Seth and Raw because of the depth that they give you. This book is more about a how-to guide and that's why it's on the list. It's a how-to guide on how to access your own Akashic Records. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with what Akashic Records are, basically they are like the book of everything. They are like the area where all answers to every question in the universe exist. And everybody has access to their higher self. They can tune in during meditation, access their higher self, access God source, whatever you want to call it, and get these answers and these downloads. And so the Akashic Records teaches you as the reader how you can put practices into your life to get in tune with your higher self and the Akashic Records and how to get answers to your own questions. And I feel like that's really important because as a light worker, I feel like oftentimes people come to me or come to other light workers to get clarity for their life or get answers. And while there's a time and place for that, I really want to stress the importance of being able to get there on your own. Everybody can tap into their own inner knowing and their own answers. And it's all about learning how to listen, knowing how to quiet the mind. And so this teaches those fundamental steps. And for that, I'm really grateful that it's in my collection. Now, the last book that's on my top five list, I actually just finished. Now, this book was something that I just stumbled on in Barnes & Noble, and it is the Bhagavad Gita. And now this is considered a classic in Indian um, culture and religion. Um, and the Bhagavad Gita, I, I'm really big on culture. I'm big on learning about different religions, different ideologies. Like to me, that allows me to expand my mind and kind of find a place for everything and figure out where it came from and why people believe in certain things. And so I decided to read the Bhagavad Gita because I thought it would offer me a new perspective on just the idea of our reality. And so 
It's considered a classic and the version that I have here is a translated version and it also includes um, chapter kind of summaries by the translator and he does a great job of breaking down the context of the book and also what to expect in the chapter and does a great job at translating words and understanding their complex meaning because when you translate from a different language oftentimes that word will have a very distinct or different uh, or dynamic meaning and sometimes that's hard to grasp so I think he does an excellent job now the Bhagavad Gita translates to the song of the Lord and the reason why I like this book is because it's written in a, the, a story format it follows the journey of a warrior named Arjuna and he's on a battlefield and he's torn about whether or not to fight because he has family on each sides of the battle and he, he's with his charioteer and he has no idea that his charioteer is Krishna who in this belief system is a form of God and so it's only later just that Krishna reveals himself but Arjuna basically starts asking his charioteer Krishna what should I do I don't know what to do in the situation like should I fight should I not fight and Krishna being in the form of God starts answering his questions and the book has I believe it's 18 chapters and in each chapter is basically a lesson or a teaching from Krishna about existence about how to be a good person about following your Dharma or your path or what you're here to do and um, what it means to be good what it means to be evil and he also clears up a lot of misconceptions about the way that humanity thinks about God or the other realms so even though it's it was outside of my spiritual bubble or my I should say religious sector at the time that I found it I think it was a great book for opening up my eyes into the spiritual world from a different perspective and for that reason I highly recommend it so with that being said that would be my top five recommend it spiritual books for you to expand your mind and journey into the light especially if you're interested in tapping into your own soul tapping into your own answers or getting in touch with your own higher self so let me know down below if you have any other books that you would recommend I love reading I love learning new things let me know if there's a book that I don't know of and if you get your hands on any of these books which I will link down below let me know what you think of them and let's start a conversation Anyways, guys, I hope you guys come back for another episode of Ascending with Jess. Peace.